Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. This is going to be my entry for Retrofair 2020 about why the Amstrad CPC 6128 is my favorite retro computer. As some of you may know, the Vintage Computer Festival Pacific Northwest was cancelled recently due to the virus pandemic. But instead of completely cancelling the event, some of us are making videos with small presentations to make it into a virtual event. So this is going to be my contribution of the 10 personal reasons of why the Amstrad CPC 6128 is my favorite retro computer. Let's get started. The number one point has to be that it has really good basic. From the moment you turn on the machine, it's just screaming to be used and explored. The basic developed by Locomotive Software is friendly, has a good editor, has reasonable errors, and it has good support for all the graphics and music capabilities of the Amstrad CPC. The Amstrad also came with a really good detailed manual teaching you how to program and a full reference for the basic language. It's really perfect for learning to program and I'm actually using it today with my eight-year-old daughter to teach her how to program computers. It has a reasonable keyboard and good ergonomics, so the keyboard feels kind of middle of the road. It's not a super nice mechanical keyboard like the Dragon 32 or some of the fancy MSX computers, but it's actually totally reasonable and it's way better than some of the other computers like the Spectrums, even the later ones. What makes it stand out for me is the layout. The layout is perfect. It's pretty much a standard PC layout. It has the cursor keys in the right place, thank Q, and it has has even a numeric keypad on the side, so it really is something that you can use for many hours. It had an integrated disk drive. If you do any real programming work, disks are just a must. Trying to save and load serious programs from tape is super frustrating, and I know that because back in the day I had an assembler that for I don't know why, but you could only save to tape, and it was a pain. <laughs> The only downside is that these were 3 inch discs instead of the more standard 3.5 discs. As a bonus, because the Amstrad already comes with a disc controller on board, you can trivially hook up a GoTech and have a disc emulator with every software written for the Amstrad on it. It had 128K of RAM. That was a lot of RAM back then. But most importantly, it was double the RAM of most of the Amstrad systems. Whenever you end up having twice as much RAM as the most common machine, you know you're in good shape. So it was actually really good for doing development and targeting 64K of RAM. Besides, with that extra RAM, one thing that it allowed you to do was to crack protections and copy games much more easily. Hmm. It runs CPM. All units actually came bundled with the discs for the CPM, but if I'm going to be honest, it actually never made much of a difference for me. I know some people get excited about this feature, so I figure I'd bring it up. For me, at most, early on, I used it to manage files on disk, like using pip, remember that? Because you actually couldn't do that from basic. But afterwards, we would always use custom file managing apps instead, like Discology or Oddjob or some other app. Maybe at some point I used a Pascal compiler that ran under CPM, but that was about it. It had a huge game catalog. The Amstrad CPC line was fairly popular and long-lived, starting with the Amstrad CPC 464 in 1984, and it went on roughly until 1990. During that time, there were lots of games made, and they're all compatible with the CPC 6128. To be fair, a lot of those were horrible Spectrum ports, but there were a lot of great games in there too. And also don't forget, the Amstrad CPC was fairly popular in the UK, but it was super popular in Spain and France, so it's worth exploring the catalog of games made in those countries as well for some real gems. Lots of disk support. My number three point was that it had a disk drive, but this point is almost as important, which is the disk was actually supported. Because the 6128 was released in 1985, there was a lot of time to support that disk format, and a lot of games came out on disk in addition to tape. Initially, because most games came out on tape, games would load all data in the 64K of memory, and that was it, the game would run and it would never touch the tape again. But eventually, games started taking advantage of the disk and loading multiple times for different levels or locations or different parts of the game, which made the games way better. It had the best color palette of any 8-bit computer. There, I've said it. All right, so this is very subjective. But when I look at all the color palettes of all the other 8-bit computers, this one just stands out. It has the most vibrant and attractive colors of all of them. Maybe they were not the best colors if you're making a dark, moody game, but really it was perfect for the great majority of the games. As a bonus, 
the video out was an RGB signal, so it actually had great image quality. It had a very straightforward architecture for programming. There was nothing horribly tricky about the Amstrad CPC architecture, so it made programming and assembly nice and straightforward. The video memory was mapped to the highest 16K block of RAM and it had three totally reasonable video modes. All the chips could be easily accessed through ports from the Z80. The main downside of the simple architecture combined with the pretty graphics is that that was a lot of data, and copying that data to the screen every frame would make things slow. So oftentimes, Amstrad games ended up being slower than similar games in other platforms. There are lots of new development for the Amstrad CPC. The Amstrad CPC has a vibrant community of homebrew games currently, with lots of new games created every year. These games are made with the accumulated knowledge of the last 35 years, so they use every trick possible, and really, the results show. The games made nowadays are technically much better than the ones during the commercial life of the CPC. We've also learned quite a bit about game design since then, like not killing you instantly for walking into a new screen, so they're often a better play experience in addition to being smoother and better looking too. And it's not just games that are being made today, people are designing new hardware to interface with the CPC. Memory expansion, ROM boards to add lots of new ROMs, cartridge systems to load games instantly, integrated drive emulators, and even cards with hard drive-like access and Wi-Fi support. It's time to get that Amstrad on the internet. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that mini presentation. I encourage you to go out and check out all the other presentations for the Retrofair 2020 that are out there. There's some really interesting ones. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then. Bye. Bye.